What's up you guys? Welcome back to another back testing video. In these videos what I do is I basically pull up a chart and I start theoretical trading or simulated trading or back testing whatever you want to call it. I basically go back in time and because TradingView has this cool replay feature available to premium members, uh, by the way, if uh, you are looking for a trading view, there should be a link down below in the description. You can sign up somewhere uh, or you can just go to tradingview.com and sign up for their premium. It gives you the ability to do this replay. But anyways, uh, I'm going to be using the replay feature, which allows me to press play, stop and pause uh, old data. You can see as soon as I press it, it's going to start moving for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some theoretical trades here. OK, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a notepad as well. Let me get a notepad pulled up so that way we can kind of track exactly how well uh, the the trading is going right so I'm gonna put that off to the side but what I'm gonna do is if I take a loss I'll just record it if I take a win I'll record it and then we will go from there now I do want to say before I jump into the back testing uh, this is mostly the technical analysis component of my strategy this is not every single bit but I find that uh, you guys seem to like these sort of back testing segments and they seem to be helpful to you to maybe back test your own strategies and that is what I encourage you to do is take the these sort of videos sit back they're a little bit longer but we go through some ideas and then uh, you can use those same concepts to go test your own strategies now this is not going to include the fundamental analysis component of my strategy whether you use fundamental analysis or not I definitely do in my own trading it goes into almost every single trade if not every single trade that I take and so that is not going to be included and we're also not going to have sentiment analysis which is another component of my trading which uh, you can find out more about that we'll pull up a screenshot on the on the website right here. This is the retail sentiment data that you can get on uh, a1trading.com. Uh, but anyways, both of those things are not going to be included. So please remember that uh, those things are not a component to my back testing here. And uh, we're just going to be focusing on the technical aspect of my trading strategy, which involves trend following. OK, so I am a trend trader. So what I'm looking to do most of the time, if not all the time, is looking to go with the dominant energy of a market. If things are moving higher, I am looking to go long. If things are going lower, I am looking to get short as long as uh, it matches up with the the trend as well as also with my fundamental bias. That is usually the catalyst that I need in order to get long or short. OK, so with that, we're going to go through some entries. And so let's just go ahead and, and jump into this. Uh, I'm looking at the four hour chart on Euro New Zealand. We are above this 200 period SMA. And generally, I use this as a filter for trend. So if this if price is above this, I am looking mostly for long setups. And if I'm if price is below this, I'm looking for shorts. It's a very, very simple way for me to gauge the general direction of the longer term uh, market. Right. So here we were kind of in a, a downward market and now now we've actually shifted to an upward market. So now I'm looking for long setups just based on the technical analysis component of my strategy. So with that said, uh, let's let's mark some levels here and then we can just jump into this. So here we are. We're going to start uh, playing this here and we're going to be looking to see if there's any sort of pullback. Well, <laughs> or the market will just have a freak out and just go parabolic on us. OK, so things did not work out there in terms of trying to get the buy and the pullback. But maybe we can get a buy if price pulls back to this area. I do also like this area as a potential previously broken level of resistance. And so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use the Fibonacci extension tool here for my trading strategy. I use this in my back testing. I will show you guys exactly how. OK, so let's say if price does pull back here, I want to I want to go long right around here. And I'm going to pull this up for him. Double click the, the tools, the tool here on, on uh, the fib retracement tool on uh, trading view. And you can actually see that I've got all these different levels uh, saved. Now, these are not always what I use, but when I'm back testing, it allows me to see where my uh, my stop loss would be, which is this one right that that distance there. And then these are potential either take profits or where I will trail my stop. OK, so basically, what I'm going to say, it's, it makes a little bit more sense if you've watched some of my past videos where I explain that. But also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, just explain it as we go. So let's say that this is my entry, right? So this is my pending buy or whatever you want to call it, right? It's a, a trade level that if price comes down to this point, I am interested in getting into a long position. And I'm going to use this one as my stop. OK, so if price comes down lower, then uh, I'd like to get an entry here to the long side and see if we can get some continuation. And I will use these levels here as uh, trailing stop levels. So what that means is that let's say price comes down here and I get long. 
and then price comes up to this point, I may use that one, one times my distance to move my stop to break even. If price keeps going, I'll move my stop to one R, to two R, etc. And when I say R, this is negative one R, which is my initial risk on the trade. This would be plus one R if, pri if price, uh, if I ended up taking profit here, 2R, 3R. I know it's a bit confusing at first, but I think the best way to explain it is to just show examples. So let's get into it. So I'll click play here and let's see if we got an entry into uh, a trade here. Uh, and there it is. Okay, so we just got entered in our theoretical trade. So we're recording that. We're gonna pull up our sheet as we go along. So let's just let it play and see if this trade Okay, so it's starting in the right direction. We'll see if we can get a point to move price up to. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be close here. But let me show you what happened. Price moved up to our our uh, our one R distance, right? This is the one R distance, and so at this point in my trade, in my strategy, I would trail my stop, in many cases, to break even. Okay, so at this point. The trade, if it closes out, if it tags this level, I will close the trade out uh, as a break even trade. So let's click play and see if that happens. Not quite, very close. Okay, so that would have been a break even trade there for me. So we can record that as a plus 0%. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention that each one of these trades, I'm gonna be risking 1% per trade, okay? So just as a just as a general rule here, okay. So next, let's go ahead and press play and see if we can find some new trade setups. Not not to worry, we can probably look for a chance to re-enter here. I do like the chance of. Um, I guess I can't really use fib retracements just because I'm using the fib tool, but I think that this probably is a decent pullback area. Let's see if there's anything. Uh, anything else that catches my mind here or my eye here? Uh, so price is rallying off that level. So, you know, I'm, I think I'm actually going to, I'm going to take a re-entry here. So although I got broken even on my first trade there, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I'm repeating the trade since it's right there. And I still think that this zone looks pretty strong the way it held right there. So let's see if we can just press play and let's see if that area would work out better the second time around. Okay. So starting off right, uh, didn't quite make it to our break even point. Okay. There we are. We are currently about to be, we are uh, locking in at least break even. So the worst thing that can happen is that price turns around and closes out for break even. Okay. So, okay. Uh, and here's an interesting little component. Price came up to this point and technically that would be a place where I would trail my stop. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this trade closed out here, right? Because according to my strategy, again, uh, we entered here. Price went in our favor. We moved stops to break even. Price moved again in our favor up to this point. And although it's very, very close, I'm gonna just say that it, it, it hit it. I think it did. Uh, so this would be a one R locked in. So my stop loss in this case would be trailed up to this point here. So on the rebound, on the retest here, I would have gotten stopped out for one R. So we can go ahead and record that as plus 1%. And let's see if it makes me look like a fool here and keeps going higher. Uh, again, I'm just trying to be objective with this, even though, um, you know, it, it could could go up, could go down here. But I think, you know, the overall trend there is still bullish. And look at that. So uh, it's looking good still for buyers there. Let's see if it, if it keeps going. All right. So I'm actually interested in a repeat long here, which sounds strange, but let me let me see if I can if it can meet up with my uh, my entry criteria. So we, we've kind of struggled to, to get past this level here, right? You can kind of see we this area was was supply for a while, right? We had a lot of sell pressure multiple times here. Uh, we poked through it and then we got a lot of rejection, but now we've rallied right through it and held that area. I think this is probably a area where I'm still interested in at least trying for a long setup. So let me delete this one and go ahead and put in another long. I'm gonna keep it relatively tight here just because uh, it could it could also just be a fake out to the upside. So it moved quickly to the upside. It's giving a retest here. And I think that maybe it's worth just taking a shot here on the long side. So let's see if that ends up being a good play or not. And there we go, a loss. Okay, first loss for the video, it happens. 
all good. We'll take minus 1% and we will go ahead and move on there. Um, again, let's just keep it rolling and see if there's any sort of chance for re-entries. I didn't like how that just got rejected there. That kind of confirms that level as supply for the time being. And as we enter into a range here, uh, I'm not too interested in taking any buys. Okay, things are looking interesting here. Now we've actually sort of broken key resistance. And this is looking like it may be a potential entry to the short side here. If we get a couple more uh, lower highs, if we see a little bit more structure to the downside. Yeah, this is looking bearish, at least for for this time here. Um, let's see. Look at that. Look at that sharp bounce back. Um, yeah, so so don't have a clear direction here yet. Just going to wait and see if there's anything else that I like. Let me go ahead and reset my uh, drawings here. Draw, the, draw in some fresh levels. So there's our recent supply. Um, and let's just let that play for a minute. Keep going here. And again, this is a big part of backtesting is it's it's not always pretty. It's not always perfect. Uh, let's see if this level can hold or if it's going to break higher. That's going to be the big question here. If price can break through that, then I might be looking for a long. Um, yeah, I, I still like the long side here. I'm still I'm still overall bullish here just because from a technical perspective, we've got these nice overall um, uptrend moves. I think that if there is an entry point, maybe maybe I'll look for a long setup. Uh, but I gotta see, I gotta see some signs of, of an area where where buyers seem to be present. Okay, it looks like we we're getting a little bit of a reaction here. Let's see, let's see if that level can hold for the time being, or if that's gonna, what's gonna happen here. And like I said, back testing. The thing is about back testing is it's it's sometimes it's rough cut. Sometimes it's not perfect. It's kind of just. Uh, you know, going with the flow and you might not get a lot of trades sometimes. And then there's other times where you might get tons and tons of trades. Um, so again, we'll see if there's anything here. Okay. At this point, we've really just entered into a sideways trend. There's not really a strong upward or downwards trend. And so for me right now, I'm waiting to see if we can get a break out of this range, either long or short. I am interested in uh, looking at. So let's just keep this going. See if we can break above. If we can break above. Oh, okay. I'm interested in a retest buy here. If price can get right here, I'm gonna trade that and put my stop in the middle of this range and see if that can get uh, get us in for an entry. Let's see if that one works out. So again, risking 1% here. Okay, and stopped out. So we'll just do this, minus 1%. And we won't sweat it, we'll just move on. Um, and the other thing about this, guys, is that the way my trading strategy works is I take a lot of small losses. So you'll see, like, this is an example of where price looked good. I, I was patient enough to wait for the retest, but unfortunately, markets just don't always follow through. And so the thing is, though, when it does follow through, that's where the big winners for my strategy are going to come into play. So we'll see if we can find one of those. Uh, again, they're infrequent, but they're usually bigger than my losses, but we will see if we can get one out of the markets here in this back testing session. Still just trading this range here, uh, looking to see if we can get a break. And I like the south side here. Now it looks like, you know, we false broke out to the, we had a false breakout to the upside. Um, if we can get some sort of breakthrough to the downside, maybe we'll look for a short here. Got to see the sellers come in though. If they can't break through that low, then no interest just yet. Again, and you might say, well, why don't you just trade the range? It's been a great range. And again, for my strategy, I'm looking mostly to just go with a, a, a expansion like that for in volatility. So in this case, if we can get a re-entry here to the south side, so the sell side, south side, um, I'd be interested in getting into here if we get it. Okay. Sell side engaged. Let's see if we can get any sort of uh, downward follow through here on this market. Or if the market's going to tease us again. Okay, so it's taking its time, but starting out well. Let's see if it can, if it can go lower for us or not. It's trying. Okay, so at this point, the trade would be considered move stops to break even. So if price rallies here, then the worst thing that can happen is I take a flat trade. 
Best thing that can happen is it can keep dropping. Let's see if it if it can make a move downwards. Whoops, I didn't mean to grab that. I think it's in a decent place. There we go. Okay, and this is what I mean. The good trades for me, they don't come as frequently, but when they do come, there they are. Okay, so we can move this stop now. We went from uh, to break even now to one R locked in on the trade. Let's see if it keeps going south or if it's gonna just tag us for one R, we can take the profit there. Um, we'll see. Trying to go lower and there it is. Okay, great. So now at this point we've moved stops from uh, a one one R loss to break even to one R locked in at profit. So price is, is down here. Um, sorry, and now it's at two R profit, right? So we actually just locked in two R. So if price comes up and tags us out here, we'll go ahead and take two times our initial risk. And these are the sort of trades that again, I'm looking for in my strategy that make all the difference. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and because I did that earlier where I just said it looks like it's there, I'm gonna go ahead and tag that as a win of two, uh, two R or 2%. So we'll say plus 2% and then we'll move on. So I know this is not, exhilarating and I'm not up like 50% or anything like that. It's nothing crazy, but um, you can see that right now we had these two knocked each other out and I'm up 1% overall on uh, five trades. Not the best, but again, the thing is that the thing that I'm looking for in my strategy might say, well, Nick, this doesn't seem to be wor working very well. What if that had kept going for another, I don't know, uh, two more R, three more R. What if this was a plus 6%? Then I'd be up significantly overall. And that to me is the, the, the big component to my trading strategy that I'm looking for is the occasional big runners that make a big difference in my strategy. Now that might not be your style. You might say, well, I don't like winning very infrequently. I, I like to take profits more often. And that's okay, that, that might be uh, your approach. I'm not here to tell you that my strategy is the only way. What I'm here to show you is an example of what real backtesting looks like. And I basically just do these segments just to kind of um, test out my concepts and show you guys my thought process. Again, like I said, these these videos are pretty unscripted. They have no format. You know, I don't do a lot. I don't do a lot of uh, preparing for these or anything like that. I literally just go back to a part of the chart, a random part of the chart, and I start recording uh, theoretical trades. So as we go along here, uh, still like the south side for now. The sell side on uh, Euro New Zealand. Again, uh, I just wanted to test this pair and turn the camera on for you guys. If you like these videos, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. It does definitely help the content. Um, so we do have a supportive level. If we can break through that, maybe there's a, a break and retest opportunity here. Nope, looks like buyers are gonna at least give this one a hold or give it, give it a try here. Maybe the seller's coming in. Can we get a, can we get a push through lower? Okay, there it is. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these older things. Again, overall in a in a downwards market. So I'm looking for sell side trades. And let's see if we can get one here. So I'm gonna I'm shorting if price comes up to this level. I'm gonna put stops slightly above that previous pivot and see if we can catch a trade or if it's gonna run away without us. And it looks like it's gonna run away without us. I still like this trade if it wants to rebound, though it does not look like it wants to. Okay. So let's see, am I still interested? I would still be interested in, in a, a sell if price pops up there and gets me in for a moment. Let's see. Okay, we are in the trade with a stop right there above that structure point. Gonna see if this one wants to run. Nice, nice start to the trade. That gets us up to break even, okay? Break even on the trade. We've locked in at least uh, a, a free trade, if you wanna call it that, but more just a, a trade that is no longer having a risk on it. Okay, uh, didn't quite get there. Let's see if it tags me out for break even. Nope, wants to give it a try to the south side. And broke even. There it is, okay. Ended up taking a 0% trade. And we are still 
what is that? Uh, two losses, two wins, 50-50. Not bad. Let's keep going. Let's see if, if Price wants to... We're starting to shift directions a little bit here. I want to see I want to see if price can kind of really break through to the downside uh, and show some some real sell pressure here or not. I'd really like to see kind of a break back through the lows. This trend, this counter trend, still seems to have some strength for the time being. And this level of resistance is not as fresh anymore. Okay, we're seeing some sell side. Uh, Let's see if we can get any retests that I like. Uh, we gapped up over the weekend there. Interesting. Okay, yeah, and I, this is this didn't get the fall through I'm looking for. So I, I still think, you know, this is kind of sideways for the time being. Let me also get rid of this old trade. That's sorry about that. That's confusing. Okay, so we're kind of neutral here. Uh, buyers down here. Sellers up in this area. And let's see if price wants to break one way or the other. Okay, buyers buyers really in control here. So they definitely push through this level that we had marked. If price were to retest that, I'd be interested in going long. And it doesn't seem like it wants to. Looks like price ran away from us. Maybe giving it another try here. Um, yep, I don't want to chase. Not interested in chasing here. But I do like this zone here. I like the consolidation there. If price can get through this area here, that, that previous high, looking very, very bullish. I almost... Hmm. Of course, hindsight is 2020, but it would have been nice to take a trade there on that consolidation zone. That looks like about a 38.2 retracement on the fibs. And it looks like we might get a second try. I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to act on that. Again, this is, this is the reality of, of trading is when you're in a, when you're in a, a backtesting segment, I mean, is sometimes you see a trade and you're like, well, uh, that would have been a nice trade. Maybe if it sets up again, I can take it. And that's, that's like the reality of real trading is sometimes you miss real trades when they're happening. So let's see if this would have given me a chance. <laughs> and that is also the reality of trading. So uh, price went right against me there. That's all right. We'll take a loss there of 1%. And we will keep moving. Uh, let's see if there's any chance for a rebound here to the long side. Or if we're just going to go back down to the south, to the sell side. Really back to a mixed opinion here. This zone, we'll kind of adjust it here. We had buyers in that area. Back to sort of range bound. Looks like we, we rebounded pretty nicely here for buyers getting right back to the top of this range. I'm going to go ahead and just extend this one out as well. And let's see what happens next. Again. Just the reality of, of backtesting and trading. It's a little bit frustrating sometimes. It's a little bit uh, slow at times. Okay, I wanna be a part of this breakout. If we can get a retest, I'm gonna keep my stop relatively tight there underneath structure. If we get any retest, I'm happy to look for a chance to get long. Just get a run away from me. And that's the reality too. Look at that. Woo! See, that's that's an example also of uh, just struggling with with trading, right? It's frustrating sometimes when you watch something that you want to be a long, uh, have a long position on, just not work out. Okay, so I still want to. This is this is sort of a a runaway train here, and these are the sort of markets that I'd love to be involved with, if and only if I can get a reasonable pullback here. I think the bottom of that consolidation zone, if it gives that to me, I'd be interested. Because I think, I can't check it again because I'm using the, the FIB tool for my risk management, but I think that that's roughly a 38.2. So I'd actually be interested 
If price were to shoot back down, again, we're in a, we're in a momentum market, so I think it would be worth taking a small risk there uh, on the trade to see if it can get me in. Let's see. And look at that, you guys. That is, that is painful to watch. Whoo, that is that is definitely not easy to watch. Look at that. What? Oh, this must have been. Um, this is. Uh, is that 2020? Yep, that's 2020. So, I think we have some lessons to talk about here. Definitely, definitely some lessons to talk about here. I had a trade set up. I was. 30 pips away, which on Euro New Zealand is not that much. It's actually a pretty uh, high high volatility pair. I was 30 pips away from getting into a trade that would have moved 1,000 pips in my direction, if not more. Is that 2,000 pips? 1,480 pips. That's a lot of pips to the upside that I, that I missed not because I did anything wrong, but because I did something right and I didn't chase and I just looked for an entry that I unfortunately did not get. Now, um, I have to be honest, when I look at this, I, I, I generally know that with 2020, there was a lot of volatility. So from here, I'm, I'm, you know, I would be not fully transparent if I would say I don't remember generally what happens in this chart. I know um, that we got a lot of volatility, though I will say, if price were to retest this area, this would be a, a really interesting gap fill trade for me. And I know that I would be interested in taking that trade with a stop underneath previous structure. So let's see if price comes back here. I don't, I didn't watch Euro New Zealand at this time. I was mostly glued to the stock market at these, at these crazy, crazy moments, but let's see if it does give an entry. Okay. So, okay. Wow. I don't know what it just did there. It shot down, tagged me in, and then it did some crazy stuff. Okay. So in this case, would we be at break even? Uh, yeah, we would, we would be at break even. So let's see if this is a break even trade. Nope, nope. Oh, okay, wait. We gotta pause and think about this. So volatility is massive here. I'm just going to say that back here, these candles look tiny. And this is what happened in 2020 is we had across the board, across the currency market, stock market, everything went absolutely crazy. What ends up happening here is we got in here. Great, great entry. Uh, things worked out nicely, moved up. We would have moved stops to break even. Price did, missed our break even, broke even, kept going up, moved up here, pulled back and would have been one R on the trade. So let me just add that to my thing here, plus 1%. And again, there's some, even if we didn't have the best trade and, and we barely missed this monster, this monster at, at one point was 6R, right? So imagine putting in a plus 6 or plus 5% into this mix. That would make for a very, very profitable session. But this, you guys, this is like what I do on my YouTube channel. I don't sugarcoat things on my YouTube channel. I don't show you guys a bunch of fancy cars or anything like that. I show you guys really like the behind the scenes of what it really means to be a trader and really trying to learn this stuff. I am by no means an absolute market god. I am still learning this stuff myself, although I have found consistency and I've been able to make money in the markets relatively consistently. It's not all, you know, fun and games. And you can see we're, we're 29 minutes into a video where I'm testing data on a single currency pair on a single time frame. Like this is the sort of time and effort. If you're, if you made it to the end uh, to this part of the video, then you're awesome. These, this is the reality of, of trading is you've got to put in the time, you got to put in the work. But again, we were very close to putting in plus 5%. So let's, let's tally this up. Let's, cause I, again, more volatility, uh, you know, there might be some more trades we could take, but let me just really quick show you guys where we're at and we'll, we'll kind of sum this up. So we took one, two, sorry, one, two, three, three wins. And we took one, two, three losses, okay? Overall, we took uh, these two cancel each other out. Uh, plus one, minus one, plus one. 
So, <laughs> nothing super impressive. And I know you might you might already be headed, be headed down to the uh, to the comment section to type out how much of an idiot I am. Um, and trust me, even in the back testing, when we missed that that trade entry by just a, a little bit there, uh, definitely frustrating to watch a trade go massively up. Uh, like that and just barely miss the train. So again, that's just, like I said, that's just the unfortunate reality of trading is sometimes you just miss it. And that's that's okay because it doesn't take catching every single one. In this case, had we caught it, however, let's say that we did catch that trade, right? It had dipped a little bit further and got us in. We may have gotten up to 5% on that trade. That would have made this a 6% gain, which would have been much better. Now you might say, well, Nick, 6%, that's not that much. But again, we're risking small, number one. Number two, in theory, we'd be trading other currency pairs at the same time, right? Which is a huge component to trading. So if you got 6% on Euro New Zealand and you got 5% on pound dollar and 3% on pound yen, that all adds up. Right, so that's what we're doing here with these backtesting segments is we're not taking a million trades. At In total, we took six trades, theoretical trades. Again, we didn't get that 5% gain. So we ended up just coming out at 1% gain. But number one, not losing is a huge bonus. Let me say that again. Not losing in your trading is a huge, huge win by itself. If you can catch the big winners, if you can catch the trades that become, in my, in my wording, uh, monster trades, that is where the real uh, gains are gonna come from. And they're gonna be infrequent. Again, if we kept taking trades, we might catch a monster trade around the corner, but we're not gonna take a, man a monster loss. So that's the big component of my strategy that I keep, uh, keep in mind is my losses will always be 1%, small, right? Not 20% loss, not 50% loss, just 1% losses and the occasional big winner that kind of uh, bails me out, if you will, or even uh, brings me into profit. So again, I know maybe not the most exciting back testing session, but let me let me take this second to to remind you guys that the point of me doing this video is to show you guys what real back testing looks like so that you can go test it out. Like I said at the beginning, you can use TradingView, the replay feature if you'd like. Uh, it's available on, on their platform, tradingview.com. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then I highly encourage you to like the video down below. Subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this in the future, just real raw trading content. Uh, that is what I do here on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching the video and we'll see you back in the next one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like the video down below because if you don't, you're statistically 84.72% more likely to blow an account in the next 48 hours. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, that's just facts. If you enjoyed that video and you wanna see more free content here on YouTube, I'll be popping up some videos on the screen now. Go ahead and click anything that looks interesting to you and thank you so much for supporting the channel.